Membranes are common topics to discuss in separations classes for chemical engineers. A membrane is some kind of selective barrier that will allow or favor one particular uh, substance over another. So you have some kind of preferential accumulation of uh, some component of interest on one side of the membrane so that you can concentrate it and be able to derive some kind of utility from it. And a generic uh, example, or how membranes are represented on process flow diagrams, uh, is something like this. So we'll have some kind of unit, we'll have a membrane within this unit, we'll have a feed um, entering, we will have a retentate stream that uh, makes it over the membrane, and then we'll have something referred to as a permeate stream, P, and the permeate stream is what actually uh, it's passed through the membrane. And uh, to give an example, uh, if we had some kind of size exclusion membrane, uh, particles smaller than the pore size of our membrane uh, would be concentrated in our permeate. And at this point, uh, it is a good question to ask, what kind of flux can we be expecting from our membrane? As in, what kind of flow, molar flow rates can we expect uh, in a given unit? And so, uh, writing this out, what is flux? So this will depend on the kind of fluid that we're using. So uh, for a gas, we'll be working with partial pressures and Henry's coefficients. And the flux of some component I across our membrane, so the quantity per area per time, the membrane will have some known area, will be equivalent to H sub I, sorry about the handwriting, the Henry coefficient for that um, particular component, I, times D sub I, the diffusivity of that component, divided by L sub M, which is the membrane thickness, times the driving force, which will be, sorry, will be equivalent to the uh, difference in partial pressure between the two sides of the membrane. So partial pressure of component I on the retentate side minus partial pressure of I on the permeate side. And if we are working with systems in which the uh, it is not well mixed on the feed or retentate side, this, sorry, uh, P sub I R term can take on, uh, will be some kind of function of the accumulated length of our membrane. And so what we can do uh, is just take an average value of that uh, if we know that quantity. And uh, just to uh, write this out, this term here uh, will be the partial pressure of component I on the retentate side. Okay, and so this uh, is the molar flux equation that we will use for gases. Now for liquids, um, things will look mostly the same, um, except instead of partial pressures and Henry coefficients, we will be using equilibrium constants and uh, concentrations. And so the flux, sorry, flux for liquids will be equivalent to N sub I is equal to K sub I, the equilibrium coefficient for component I, times the diffusivity of component I, divided by the membrane thickness, times the driving force, which is the difference in concentration of component I between the retentate and the permeate side. And at this point, I would like to note the definitions that you'll commonly see, uh, such as permeance and permeability. And you'll note how in these two flux equations for liquid and gas, we have the quantities H sub I, D sub I, and 
k sub i d sub i. These terms by themselves are permeabilities. And uh, permeabilities will take on um, unique units you can find in textbooks. And uh, like any other flux equation, we know that uh, flux is equal to some coefficient times a driving force. The permeability is not that coefficient, but um, the permeance is. And so if we, and uh, so our permeance Uh, will essentially be equivalent to this term, um, the the term in front of our driving force in our two flux equations for liquid and gas. And uh, just to clarify, our permeance is generally uh, equivalent to like some kind of mass transfer coefficient, uh, like we've seen previously in our flux equations. And uh, moving on, we uh, I will go into uh, some typical equations that we will come across when uh, trying to solve membrane problems. Uh, usually what we will be given will be the feed molar flow rate, N sub F, the permeate molar flow rate, N sub P, uh, something called theta, which is the cut, as well as the composition of our feed stream um, of some component uh, that we are interested in and the thing to note about theta is that theta is equivalent to the flow, the molar flow rate of our permeate stream divided by the molar flow rate of our feed stream. And so uh, our cut can take on any value ranging from zero to one. Uh, when theta is equal to zero, it means we have no permeate stream. Our membrane is somehow completely impermeable. Nothing's getting through it. Uh, and so our feed stream is the only um, or our retentate stream will have the same uh, molar flow rate as our feed stream, assuming there's no reaction occurring. And uh, applying mass balances on our uh, membrane results in equations uh, such as this. So if we were to do some kind of component mole balance on uh, some species A, for example, what we would find is that the retentate composition of species A is equivalent to the feed composition of that species A minus the permeate composition of that species A times the arc cut, and this quantity is divided by 1 minus theta. So this is a common uh, equation you'll use um, from the mass balance and uh, these mass balances uh, can be a little bit tedious to do, so typically uh, we'll just go right to the equation and use it to arrive at some final result. Uh, we also define a quantity referred to as a separation factor that is commonly used in membranes. And the separation factor is called alpha AB. And so assuming we were working with some kind of binary system, it tells us uh, the, the separation factor for um, this particular system, and it is equivalent to the permeate composition of species A divided by the retentate composition of species A divided by 1 minus the permeate composition of your species A uh, and that quantity is divided by 1 minus XRA, so the retentate composition of your species A. And uh, a final equation that will typically come in handy when we are working with membranes is the definition of another variable referred to as selectivity. And selectivity is an intrinsic property of the membrane itself. So when you go to a membrane manufacturer and you uh, have some kind of requirements, uh, it will be unique to this membrane and it's what uh, can make a membrane quite expensive. And the selectivity value is a function of the separation factor that we just defined. It is uh, 
So the way we evaluate our selectivity, which is alpha a b star, which is this quantity here, uh, is through this equation. And uh, I'm sorry for just uh, writing out these equations, but the math is uh, from derivations that you can find quite readily in textbooks. Um, and usually in these kinds of uh, chemical engineering classes, uh, it's mostly the application of these uh, equations. So we're going to divide this quantity by, and sorry, uh, I will define, so this variable right here is R. And what I will do is finish writing this up. Okay, and so um, this quantity here is equivalent to our selectivity. Um, you may likely be asked it to find it on an exam um, if you are given the separation factor. And this term R is a ratio of the pressure in our permeate divided by the pressure in our retentate, or I'm sorry, in our uh, feed, feed or retentate side. And so if we assume that our feed and our retentate have the same pressure, uh, that would be equivalent. Um, generally, the maximum uh, pressure ratio we can have in practice is uh, typically about uh, five to one. So our permeate uh, would be one fifth or five times greater or less than the pressure on the opposite side of the membrane, the feed side. Um, and that's just due to uh, the fact that we would need compressors or vacuums. And uh, it does get quite expensive to operate uh, membranes when you have pressure ratios and the maximum ratio we can economically generate uh, is about five. And uh, this concludes a general introduction to membranes. Uh, it is essentially mostly the application of uh, a lot of math equations to define uh, these variables. Um, but the nice thing about membranes is relative to something like adsorption, uh, membranes can generally, uh, they have longer shelf lives. Uh, they can continue to be used uh, for much longer periods of time. Unlike absorption where you need to uh, strip your adsorber um, after it becomes saturated with your adsorbate, uh, membranes can continue to function assuming you don't have some kind of accumulation on it. So um, an application of membranes that we can discuss is reverse osmosis. So how do we purify water? How do we desalinate water to get potable water so that people can actually use in homes? Uh, and I'll get to that later. So um, this concludes an introduction to membranes and thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.